What's up, everybody? Uh, we got a graphite drawing that I did about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, something I've been wanting to draw for a while, and Creature was nice enough to let me do that for him. So yeah, all these videos are just progress videos. They're not meant to be uh, a way to do things. It's just the way I do things. Uh, techniques I have adopted from instructors and books and stuff that I found online uh, and these are all meant to just show my own struggles and my own learning processes. So here's the beginning of the drawing in the earliest of stages. Uh, I had definitely already sketched a few on the side uh, to figure out light and shadow and all that. But here I'm using a pencil, I'm using a technique I don't use anymore. I recently just stopped using the blue pencils altogether. They're made by Prismacolor, uh, non-photo blue. And it was just a way I used to like to sketch my drawings before inking them. And I ended up moving to all graphite about a year ago and stopped using them. Uh, there's a few more videos with the blue in it, but um, you'll see in later videos that I'm not using them anymore and that I'm just sketching in everything with graphite. And it just looks better, feels better, and um, so yeah, you won't see that for more than a few more videos, I don't think. I'm just kind of blocking in everything around the, the initial drawing here, and I'm using the Koi Noir woodless graphite pencils, both the the Hardmuth and Progresso. Um, I think that's an HB, probably. That's that's what I would be using now anyways for this like initial uh, lay down of shadow, dark and light kind of situations. Um, I still use the Koi Noir pencils. They're the favorite, my, the, the best ones that I found, the, my favorite pencils. Um, and I'm just kind of noodling my way through it, hoping that things look good, hoping, I'm always hoping thing, I'm doing things correctly. Trial and error, a lot of fucking up, mostly error, and just pushing forward through it, uh, always f fixing mistakes. The whole thing is a mistake until it's done. Uh, I know more about separating light and shadow nowadays where I have a bit more confidence going in, but I do remember specifically this one being a problem, especially with Ruben's forms. They're, they're bizarre sometimes in certain areas, like the shoulder meeting the her chest here is... I don't know how accurate that is. I was just trying to emulate what he had done on his Saturn. And uh, I like the way it turned out. Um, I could have spent a lot more time on it. I think, I think that's usually the case on most of the drawings I, I do and finish. Um, so the idea was that I was going to take Saturn, Rubens' Saturn, and turn it, turn him into a witch. So I gave her, I attempted to give her more feminine features in the face. I gave her like a drooping breast and tried to make it more of a, a witching motherly kind of thing, a nasty ass mother. I can see already that I'm working my way into light where I probably shouldn't, but also I'm just trying to get the white of the paper to disappear. Uh, I've tried to do these fully rendered drawings on toned paper and I like it, but I, I, I erase and mess up so much that the paper ends up shredding. So this is all, this one particularly is on a Canson Bristol recycled XL which I still use sometimes, but I think my favorite now is Arch's Hot Press, the big pink book, watercolor paper. 
for the most part, it looks like I'm doing everything fairly accurately. This, her, her abdomen, stomach area, hip zone here was definitely a problem later. So I'm working on a lot of structure, just getting in the lines, blocking it in. Coming up, I erase the kid a few times, trying to get it right. The way I'm sketching here is more accurate to how I would probably get the drawing going these days. The area where she's holding the kid was super problematic. Uh, there are a lot of little subforms and baby fat folds and squishy parts that were that needed a lot of attention that I didn't realize I needed to give until further down the road. So here's where I realized that I just didn't like the figure. Um, I've learned not to fuss with something too much. If it's if it's a problem, just try to redraw it, find where you you fucked up the first time, and keep moving forward. And it looks like I'm doing okay. And then I think I race again. I think it took a couple hours of extra studying his drawing to realize where I was messing up. It feels like I'm getting all the structures right. Um, I can't remember exactly where I'm going wrong. I'm trying to look at it and see what the problem is. It it looks like it's a it looks like it's out of proportion. His legs a little wonky. You know, his below his knee where his feet are hanging. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going through and making the darks darker at this point. I can tell that at the time I was probably more confident in where I was at at the moment. Um, I think that leg changes. Uh, his, the kid's lower leg, lo the his left leg, ends up kind of swooping over the the drapery on the adult figure's leg eventually. But yeah, that thumb and those subforms look okay. The tip of the thumbs just barely in the light. I remember really wanting to get that right. This finger was a son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing things by the book at this point. And by the book, I mean from what I was taught from a few lessons like online or in a book. Um, this happens still. I, you know, I guess uh, I still lack the discipline sometimes.
it was important to me to show the interlocking forms, uh, the leg thrusting up into her her hips and the barrel of her rib cage folding over the kid and trying to get all these forms, managing the forms, you know, trying to not get lost in shadow and stuff like that. It it when I'm blocking in shadows, I try to make little marks uh, to remind me of where the form stops and starts. Here I am struggling through the kid's face. Um, I remember spinning the paper around a lot and trying to look at him uh, right side up. And looking at it a lot in the mirror to make sure where the symmetry was visible in Ruben's painting that I was getting the same effect in mine. Uh, and also trying not to be like married to anything I already had put down. Always willing to, to redo anything I can to make it a better picture. I can tell at this point I'm becoming a little more confident in the structures I've built on the paper uh, by darkening them, getting the darkers dark, or the darks darker, and adjusting smaller forms over the larger forms. Her face, her jaw, and teeth were a struggle as well. Uh, I end up changing that quite a few times. But yeah, I'm just kind of cruising and uh, fingers crossed the entire time. Looking at his painting dozens of times every few seconds, it seems like. Constantly stopping and analyzing, uh, going back and forth, erasing, pushing, pulling. These boards I used to draw on uh, weren't completely flat. That's why you're getting that bouncy effect on the drawing. I got some new ones that don't do that so much. If you saw the ruler come into the, the, the camera just for a second, that was me measuring where the, the stars are going to be sort of aligned in the middle of the, the drawing. Uh, with the hopes that it would be, I was hoping that I measured it properly for the skateboard for the stars to be on the nose of the board. We'll see. It still hasn't come out yet. That in itself could be an entire series of videos is measuring art for skateboard graphics. Getting all of the designs to fit properly on the skateboard. Every board is different and which means every drawing needs to be suited for that particular board. It's totally subjective. Often 32 inches by around eight and a half is what I draw them at, I think. And uh, the first few I did uh, years ago now have uh, crop marks at the ends where I wasn't drawing it tall enough or wide enough, but uh, since then I've gotten a bit better at judging the size of the boards. And I also sometimes request the, the a PDF file of a, a template of the board it'll be going on. <clears throat> it helps me understand how, how wide and tall I need to draw it.
it looks like I'm doing an okay job of separating light from shadow here for the most part. I know there's more light on the top of that leg, on her right leg, than there is below her knee and down to uh, the top of her foot along her shin and calves. Um, and then in her left foot, it looks, it looks reasonable at this point. But I still think I could have, I should have darkened the entire area a few values darker. I think it would have helped me out. But I manage it. I remember being afraid to darken in that drapery over her knee and leg there. Uh, it is easily one of the darkest areas in the whole painting, on the Rubens painting. And I'm not sure why I hesitated so much. I know that I was trying to get the, the, the folds and wrinkles uh, done properly before I just blacked it out, I think uh, I was just apprehensive to commit to a huge dark area right there uh, this early on. But you can see that I'm slowly, I'm slowly working my way into that black, that really dark black uh, in the Rubens painting. Clouds and atmosphere are tons of fun. Uh, they're kind of hard to fuck up, in my opinion. It, it, it just with graphite, it's they're fun to just just sort of freestyle in there and see what works. As long as you're, as long as I'm giving the structures in front of them their credit, their 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 due credit. Uh, I think they can generally be pretty fun to to draw. And it's usually how I will start the day, kind of. I'll, I'll generally start in a an area that takes less brain power. Uh, and that, for me, is the cloud areas and maybe areas I know for a fact would, would have to be darker. I can. It's kind of a good warm-up uh, instead of trying to focus on a complicated um, pair of subforms meeting or something like that. I think at this point in the drawing, I was confident in the structures and the forms and all the all the fundamental layouts of the drawing, and I was just in adjusting period where uh, trying to get the light to fall over the forms properly into the shadows and just refining at this point. I think rather than building, uh, it's, it's still building, but it's definitely in a refinement stage.
I've made it to the probably my favorite part of the drawing where I know I'm almost done and I'm able to adjust things freely without worrying too much about just uh, screwing the whole thing up and adjusting all my values and gradients uh, still playing with the clouds down here and just excited really uh, I definitely look forward to this part of the drawing and all, all the drawings that I do it seems to be where things really start to come together for what I hoped to be like the final version of it I can also tell I'm not keeping my pencil sharp enough um, they just go down better when they're sharper rookie mistakes all over the place I feel like the way drawing goes for me is just it's all just mistakes every time and each time I start another drawing I'm just hoping to make hoping not to make those same mistakes twice it's inevitable I I do it every time but there's something to be learned in every every single scratch and stroke on that piece of paper is I hope to remember for the for the next drawing every drawing seems to be the a preparation for the next one And just when I thought I was past all the structural problems, here I am erasing again. So I was talking a bit of shit. But yeah, that happens. With more adjustments, uh, more problems become visible, for sure, until the very end. I like to do the, I guess I call them sub-graphics for the board separately. Uh, it helps me keep the main graphic uh, compositionally important. I mean, the letters and all that stuff invading on the main piece just keep my eyeballs confused. So I do them separate. And the, the, the guys at the Creature Art Department are cool enough to insert them digitally later. So they're all separate scans, and I send them all to them at once in a file and they put them all down on the board for the final version. You can kind of see where the the bolts go uh, just above the tail and the, the blue pencils there above the T. Always fingers crossed that this would fit on the final board. I was using the uh, Microns for lining the letters and here I have a Pentel pocket brush uh, they're refillable and I settled on the pocket brush I don't know a long time ago I think there are probably better inks out there but it seems to work for what I need it to do these letters were filled in black <clears throat> with the hopes of digitally changing them to gold. I thought gold would look best over the black and white drawing. Um, sometimes it doesn't make it all the way to the factory. Um, 
creatures, our department makes decisions that are probably better in the long run that I can't foresee that they can. And sometimes uh, the graphic needs to be um, adjusted to, to look better in the final. Uh, this is the top graphic for the top of the board. Creatures C with the crossing sides thought was necessary. And of course a slow roll scroll of the final drawing. Please let me know what you thought of the video, what you think of the drawing, and how I can improve on the following videos I'm going to be uploading. I'm working on several. Uh, I have about a dozen I have ready to roll that I'm editing and making ready for YouTube. Give me all the feedback you can. I'm looking forward to doing more, and I'll see you next time.